Hey folks, just me, Sabora here, as I continue to review some movies and specials since December's Christmas month. Well, here's an instant surprise. I just saw a totally savage, badass Santa Claus movie that's an action movie altogether. It's called Violent Nights. With David Harbour, you may know him as Sheriff Hopper in the TV series Stranger Things. I'm glad he came back uh, this season. And it just gets better and better as it follows. <laughs> I mean, especially when I saw it um, during the 4th of July weekend uh, that year. Anyway, uh, but yes, he's our jolly Saint Nick. Who has trouble uh, having to use Christmas magic, but he is indeed a drunken, also spurred out some foul language a little bit, but yes, he does vomit and he does take a piss and all. But nevertheless, um, he's our hero to stop a bunch of bad guys from taking everyone hostage in order to. Uh, Go into the vaults, you know, stealing all the money's worth. So that's their Christmas. Kind of like in the tradition of Die Hard, in a way. And yes, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, and it's going to stay that way. So who cares about the debate? But hey, just be happy we got another action movie in the Christmas theme. Yeah. So anyway, as we continue, it stars David Harbour once again, joining in with John Leguizambo. Yes, because we don't talk about Bruno in, in Encanto. <laughs> but of course, he was Luigi in the live-action Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993, which I know was terrible, but nevertheless, still is. But we're already going to get the new one that's coming out next year. But at least he got to be in films like Carlito's Way. And he got to be in in movies like uh, Spawn. I enjoyed Spawn. And uh, he was in many others that he's done. And he's also a comedian, too. And he was even in the, the, the sequel to um, Kick-Ass, as I recall. But John Leguizamo's always been a great, talented actor. Yeah, Alex Hazel, Alexa Louder, Edie Patterson, Cam Gigantent. Yeah, that guy from Stupid Twilight. And he was in Never Back Down, Burlesque, um, Easy A. Well, Easy A was great, though. And he was in the movie called Priest. And the Magnificent Seven, which was the the new one, well, not that new, but came out in 2016, with Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt, come to mind. Uh, Leah Brady, uh, yeah, Leah Brady, Beverly D'Angelo, yes, she's now in the second Christmas movie after National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, but I know she's done all the vacation movies and and other stuff. Hey, it's great to see her in this one. And trust me, her performance is going to be really badass, too. <laughs> because, well, it's quite different from her actual character. Of the of Ellen Griswold. <laughs> uh, Brennan Fletcher, Andre Erickson, Alexander Elliott, Mike Dupay... Mitra Suri, Stephanie Sai, Sean Skint, I don't know if I pronounce it right, but whatever. Ken uh, Iden, Charlie Yoon, Von Glein, and Eric Offavale. And here's something that's really special. It's written by Pat Casey and Josh Miller, who did the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Including the sequel. 
This has got to be good. Come on. With that kind of doll eye that these guys wrote and everything, this has got to be. And it's directed by uh, new director uh, Tommy Ricola. Um, although actually, maybe not exactly as new because he has he's a Norwegian film director who's done several films like uh, Kill uh, by Joe. He did Dead Snow, so yes, he did a Christmas movie before, which is a horror comedy. And I guess at that point on, he just did a film called The Trip. It's a different trip movie, which which actually has uh, Iso, Henny, and Nomi Ratpace. Which apparently this was the movie that got him the job to direct this film. Because he really knows his style. The movie begins set on Christmas Eve. We meet our Santa Claus. But he's not your ordinary kind. This one is indeed savage. Total badass. Beastie. And not only that. But he is very drunk. And very hard. But he does indeed have a heart of gold. And soul. For sure. Uh, while he's preparing to deliver some more gifts for the children around the world, because he just delivers some, um, because he's just getting ready for his next season, uh, he decided to have a drink at a local pub called the Bristol, and he basically bumps into this, um, this patron, also dressed up as Santa Claus, but this was his four-year shift as an in-store Santa, you know, delivering and, and caring for all the kids in the world and all. So he, he was having a beer too. Uh, Santa was, of course, <laughs> cracking some walnuts here. Uh, and then you have the bartender who's a woman too. <laughs> Join. So he just goes around just sporting, uh, just a, a, as he's making conversation with the guy, he was sporting a little bit of a rant uh, where he laments that, Children have become increasingly materialistic in the world, so that's another reason why he exists. Because, you know, there are kids out there who are spoiled, selfish, you know, sociopaths, psychopaths out there, or even ones that grew up to become one. Even though there are some very nice and gifted and helpful people around that are not crazy and insane, but I know corporate greed and commercialism does take over but that's probably why you know he's getting fed up by it but nevertheless he just wants to continue so everyone can believe in him while well, some of them don't or they probably lost their faith or maybe because they thought this was somewhat of a fairy tale here and there well some make or leave that sort of thing. Yeah. But don't worry because he's there. Everywhere he goes. And even when they're on their nice or naughty list. Like they're either going to send out the gifts or they're going to send out some lump of colds. Here and there. So once he was done um, drinking a couple beers that he has. Um, he, he flowed off. He flied off uh, with his reindeer and sleigh, uh, which unfortunately the bartender didn't want to, to get involved because she's going to end up cleaning up all of his mess since he's running around drunk, you know, crashing into a car and all, only to find out that it's indeed a true, real Santa Claus just on his way until... <laughs> Santa accidentally vomited on her. <laughs> oh yeah, that that was just insanely uh, crazy, but, but funny too. And I know it's nasty having to see that, but what can you do? Meanwhile, in Greenwich, Connecticut, uh, we meet Jason Lightstone, who's played by Alex Hassel. He turns out that he's actually the son of of a foul mouth uh, matriarch who's also a grandma and 
and the mother named uh, Good True Lightstone, played by Beverly D'Angelo. She's the head of the family corporation and always makes her kids fight for her love and money, for sure. And yeah, she's very tough, too. <laughs> so anyway, her kids, um, aside from Jason, there's um, Alva, played by Edie Patterson, a hard-drinking um, daughter and sister who wants to take over for the family business to become a CEO. Yeah, she's our gold-digging kind. She has a boyfriend named Morgan Steele, played by Cam Gigantid, who's a wannabe action star and filmmaker like Jean-Claude Van Damme, and actually wants uh, Gertrude to become his benefactor for his latest film. Right there. And they have Alva's uh, teenage influencer son, who's loves to go online streaming with his friends you know like he goes on instagram or youtube or any other um gets all all these likes and all that stuff and sort of a jerk too named bert i know his real name is bertrude yeah just named after all of them played by alexander elliott yeah <laughs> so we learned that Jason does have an estranged wife who's black named Linda Matthews, who's played by Alexa Louder, because unfortunately they're being forced to spend the holidays um, at the house that kind of leads to more arguments here and there, and she didn't want to be part of it, and they were separated together. Uh, but they do have a daughter who's very nice and caring named Trudy, played by Leah Brady. In fact, she just watched uh, Home Alone for Christmas Eve, uh, or just got out of it. And I know because she loves this movie so much that she just can't get enough of Macaulay Cogan as Kevin McAllister, you know, staying home alone and ends up setting up booby traps for the two wet bandits, the burglars, Harvey and Mark, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. <laughs> So you get the idea. Um, of course, there is a Die Hard reference in the movie, too. So, yeah, two films that are now owned by Disney. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, but they always were from Fox. So, and they're going to stay that way. Okay. Anyway, um, they're about to celebrate Christmas at Gutrude's Mansion, which means there's going to be, indeed, more arguments here and there. Um, they did send out the gifts, and they had a Christmas party here and there with all the guests around. And there's also a lot of staffs here and there. They're serving out some food and some drinks. And also try to take care of the place in case any danger coming around. Well, that's exactly for sure. We did learn that Jason forgot to grab a gift for... For Linda and Trudy because he was so busy with a lot of things. However, he did give uh, Trudy a walkie-talkie while they're about to put her to bed. You know, getting ready for Christmas morning uh, once Santa will arrive to deliver all the gifts. And actually be able to talk to Santa so that will make her feel better. And then Jason and Linda overheard her only wish to become a family again. You know, because... You know, they've been separated and divorced and all. So then that way things will get better for them and not not deal with every arguments and on all happening. <sighs> yeah. Then when Santa finally arrives um, at the Lightstone Estate, for sure, because he already is drunk delivering all the gifts, uh, yes, they went on top of the roof and... Apparently, one of the reindeers end up taking a shit. <laughs> yeah. And he's trying to find out who did that. Like, could it be Comet? Could it be Rudolph? Or could it be <laughs> a Prancer or so? I don't know. But either way, uh, he's about to go straight into the chimney. Into the room where 
he gets to you know relax on this massage chair. He just had some milk and cookies while sending out the gifts on his sack that he's delivering. And then all of a sudden, the entire mercenary team that's being led by Mr. Scrooge, uh, Jimmy Mirandis, played by John Leguizamo, in fact, his entire team had Christmas code names such as Krampus, Candy Cane, Gingerbread, I mean... You name it. I mean, so they go around slaughtering all of Gertrude's staffs, guards, um, agents around, you know, for her protection and all. Even kill the guard that's on the toll booth. Yeah, the toll booth. So anyway, Mr. Scrooge is about to take over, you know, Holding, holding them hostage, so that way they can try to find a bolt that's hidden somewhere in the mansion uh, that has like a whole bunch of cash that's hidden inside those trunks around. But they're trying to find a way to unlock the secret key and, and all the numbers to open it, which now they're just using, you know, the latest technology instead of the usual stuff. You know, like they fire it up in order to open it. It was all locked and sealed. Yeah. So this is like Die Hard right there, too. <laughs> but Mr. Scrooge is no Hans Gruber, for sure. <laughs> but I guess he's going to play like one in this particular story here. So Santa overheard that a bunch of mercenaries were taking over. And they just spotted one who were about to attack Santa um, just when he was going to deliver the gifts. And yeah, they had a huge uh, battle together. They were fighting around. They they grabbed the knife and they about to stab him. And however, Santa doesn't know how to use Christmas magic, but he's doing what he can to find something to hit him with or stab him with <laughs> for sure and kill him with too. Um, which yes, he did actually. Uh, <laughs> he did actually uh, killed um, this one guy. You know, just started for all these ornaments, try to stab him here and there, and then later just puts in. It's already plugged into uh, to hook up the the star ornaments and stab him into his eye, and and then he then he got electrocuted and and he was on fire. <laughs> His entire face has burned to a crisp. Okay. So while Mr. Scrooge and the rest of the team were demanding free, free mil, three hundred million in cash, as he demanded, yeah, because this is exactly what he wants. Already holding them hostage and and actually threatening them to torturing them, and they actually had Jason because he's the favorite of them all, the family, to actually. You know, take out these uh, nutcrackers, and and just started to break his finger. You know, cracking it, and then later his nuts, and then they're trying to find out, you know, where the rest of the money's been hidden, and, and all the others. Because if they make one false move, they're going to get shot and killed. So anyway, so they found the bolt. Okay, I know I'm not repeating a little bit of that too, but I just want to add. A little more to, to explain it. So now, uh, Santa did overheard um, on the walkie-talkie from this one guy that he just killed, and that's where it got contact by Trudy because yes, Trudy, um, which has already been taken, you know, with Jason and and Linda to go into the living room, just when they're already been held, because they kept torturing and and taunting them. And telling them about Santa, trying to find out who this guy is. That's when they begin to, to discover that the truth that Santa was all make believe and just causes Trudy to to run away and hide in into the attic. But Trudy knows already earlier that since Santa did arrive, 
that indeed he does exist. But he did explain that parents, you know, had always said that to their child because they, they stopped believing. So that's why they're acting like, you know, you know, they were kids, so they knew this whole thing was a fairy tale and all that. But nevertheless, you know, they're great parents and all, so we want to make sure, you know, they'll be able to have their wish and, and their miracles. But now they're going to have to team up to actually try to stop these bad guys since they're already on their naughty list, for sure, while the rest are on their nice list. They have a plan where, because Santa does miss... Um, Mrs. Claus, that hopefully he'll be able to find a, some kind of a weapon to actually stop those bad guys, you know. Well, Trudy, however, has her plan to actually set up booby traps, just like in Home Alone, to, to stop all these other bad guys from coming straight up to the attic, for sure. Which that turned out to be uh, gingerbread and candy cane. Okay, <laughs> and by the way, uh, uh, the other guys, uh, yeah, Krampus is played by Brendan Fletcher, and he's the one who's the henchman who took over that's in the living room and trying to, to make sure, you know, none of them are making one false move here. And the other henchmen and women um, are Gingerbread played by uh, Andre Erickson. And Candy Cane is played by Mitra Suri. Uh, there's also uh, Gertrude's uh, Kill Squad that's being led by their leader, Commander Four, played by Mike Duplod. And then we begin to learn that, yes, they did work for Mr. Scrooge. So that means it's going to be another bloodshed coming around. We also learn that there's a twist behind Santa Claus because it and you wouldn't believe this, because for a second I thought I was going to be watching Games of Thrones or something. Well, it turns out, because on this one brief moment, um, there is a big spoiled twist here in the story, was that he was a Viking warrior named Nicomon the Red. And he was the one who's a bloodthirsty warrior who goes around with his hammer just slamming all these warriors around, all these bad guys and everyone, in order f to get his jewelry, his gold, so precious and all. And maybe, you know, to do a good world job, even though he was sort of doing a bad deed, as he figured. But what changes his ways was to become Santa Claus, and, and now he's beginning to discover the naughty and nice list, and... You know, he does have his elves, and he has his Mrs. Claus, and so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah. But he's also called by many names, for sure. <laughs> yeah. However, Mr. Scrooge doesn't believe him. He thought maybe it's just some phony, you know, portraying as Santa. Yeah, everyone's acting like that, too. Like, he might be just some, some guy who's just, you know, working for a force, and he's just dressed up as him, and he's just going to go around doing what he can. But nevertheless, I mean, this Santa is, is our hero. So he was hiding into the shed because he's already killing, like, one of those guys. And then he begins to finally just to hide out against those bad guys. And now, um, he, since he already found out that uh, Commander Fork just killed Morgan Steele, that was very shocking. Um, he ends up hiding inside the shed. He found the red hammer and was ready to to set off to to actually slam, slice, and dice all these bad guys, the, the kill squad. Yes, and they all got what they deserve. I mean, and it had some very gruesome and brutal violence. You know, ultra violent right there. That's why it's called Violent Nights, folks. <laughs> and and then Trudy uh, again, indeed sets up the traps for both um, Candy Cane and indeed <laughs> um, Gingerbread. You know, 
putting out all these pins and needles on, on them, even setting up onto the, the ladder, and then all these other traps that she, she got to, like those bowling balls and <laughs> um, tennis balls and all these other, you know, just using up as like a slingshot. I mean, and I'll, I'll tell you this, that scene alone is better than anything that you saw in the later Home Alone movies, which I know they try to go as brutal as they could be, but this one is even more brutal than ever, and it works. So, give it a nod for that. And, yes, uh, more bad guys around, and then Mr. Scrooge has just found out, since they just discovered that all the trunks have been empty, you know, three, 300 million in cash, it turns out that instead of not being in the bolt, because they had to use a secret key to open it and the numbers here and there, all used by latest technology, instead he actually, it turns out that, that it's being hidden somewhere in a naval tea set, you know, that's filled with uh, baby Jesus, with Mary Joseph and all the king's men around. So it was hidden inside the hay, and then that's where they're ready for a chase on the snowmobiles and some more killing going around. Santa was trying to save them for sure and save both Jason and, and Gutru because, you know, they sent them out to find where the cash is at. So they, they got them, but they're all held inside these duffel bags. And then they kind of squared off to... And that's where we had um, the final face-off. He's already getting shot. He, he got stabbed too earlier. He's starting to lose his Christmas magic, even though he doesn't know how to use it. I mean, there's even a scene where when he has the, the sack and it has all those other presents around. There's even a Die Hard Blu-ray, those video games, and all those other packages that he knows about. <laughs> that shows up. And... Um, this is where he faced off between Santa and Mr. Scrooge. And this is when, yeah, in, in this particular huge bloody battle right there, he began to find out the truth, that what he really is, because he saw the naughty list. And that's what he's been telling them. And now they end up going straight into the fireplace outside and hoping that they light up the, the fire, I mean, that's where both him and uh, Mr. Swoosh were just going to clash each other, and then that's where they go all the way up to the chimney, and his head got sliced. No head. <laughs> so that's, and then stupid Commander Forb came and shot him, and then, and then finally, he got shot in the head by Gertrude. Yeah. So, he was dying, but he's also reviving by the fire and the Christmas magic and stuff. So now, after, after a whole long Christmas Eve of bloodshed going around with all these bad guys getting what they deserve and even killing some of the innocent around, I mean, I swear to God, they're, they're going to be cleaning up all that mess on one Christmas morning. But there's going to be a lot of cops in the 40s arriving at their doors, and they're going to end up in all the ambulances around, and they're going to clean all that. And I, I know, I, I also forgot to mention, there's this one scene where, <laughs> um, where Linda, along with Alva and, and Bert, were all fighting together while well, Krampus was ready to shoot them but they just took out the <laughs> that's where they were using the shovel the ones that they put all these lump of coals uh, inside the fireplace yeah so they just stab him with those small shovels straight into his neck and and all so it got what he deserved <laughs> okay so now he He's finally alive, and he's ready to, to continue to deliver some more gifts. Hoping to have the best Christmas as they could, since he had such a 
one big bloodshed. I mean, Mrs. Claus finally did arrive. Um, because all all the reindeers had left too. Left him behind because of, of the gunshots. But they came back thanks to Mrs. Claus. Bought him a new sack and everything. Because his old sack just got burned into the fireplace by Mr. Scrooge. What an asshole. But, hey, what a relief. <laughs> so, he's probably going to have a wonderful Christmas after all, for sure. Okay, and I'm sorry I had to do some dead giveaways here and there in this review. And I know I didn't put the spoiler alert, but that's okay, because I just want to have fun. Um, yes, David Harbour, this is definitely the perfect role for him to play Santa Claus as savagely beastly badass he could be and this is a better role than Hellboy that he did a few years ago I mean come on I mean Ron Perlman is always gonna be Hellboy to me but David Harbour will always be Hopper to me <laughs> but nevertheless I mean he is pretty much Hopper in this film um, I kinda like that at the beginning it kinda look a little bit like uh, and I, I'm kind of shocked because at times I, I almost couldn't believe that he looks a little bit like Seth Rogen there. Um, you know, with the glasses and, and the beard too. But but without the glasses, it's indeed uh, David Harbour right there. I mean, you can tell by that face. Um, anyway, I mean, this is perfect. I mean, I, yes, at times he felt like, you know, he's... Like he's going to be the victim, but yet he begins to learn from his best friend, Trudy. And then that's where he becomes a lot of change of hearts. But an awesome change of heart because we know how he was in the past. How he was a warrior and then how he's going to become as a badass Santa as we can ever have. And that's what I love about that. Because I know Santa could be portrayed in... In many different ways, you know, like often Santa could be a great guy, an awesome, lovable, jolly old Saint Nick, overweight but cool. But yes, sometimes they always cast him as a serial killer, unless it's a serial killer dressing up as Santa, or maybe it could be any other. But I'm just glad they, but then you can have one that's that's tough and badass. So he, this was clever. Anyway, and uh, John Leguizamo was great too, uh, playing the villain um, of Mr. Scrooge. It really shows, I mean, that he can play uh, tough villains. Even though he was Bruno, but he wasn't a villain in that one. But but this is kind of the villain that he would play, just like if like he did in Carlito's Way or any other. And th this is perfect. And the fact that he has his entire team to join with it, so he knows exactly what he wants. Uh, it's always nice to see Beverly D'Angelo playing a tough, um, foul mouth uh, type of grandma right there. So you know you care. Because now you know that there is another badass. Well, the rest of the the characters are just indeed, you know, money grubbing uh, attention whores around. But deep down, they could be tough as well, <laughs> because this is one dysfunctional family right there. Um, but I really do care for for Trudy because she's the real hero right there. She really knows. You know, it's nice to have a nice girl who cares for Santa and always cares for the family to be. Put together, you know, he doesn't want to lose a family that he loves. I mean, he definitely loves his father. I mean, her father, Jason, and and her mother, Linda. I mean, because Christmas just wouldn't be the same without them, and also, life wouldn't be the same without them too. Yeah, and it's understandable. But um, he knows that. I mean. And I guess sometimes Jason could be a little weak. 
I'm talking about the character name, that is. Um, but he can be strong, too. And so is Linda, too, yeah. And, and the other scene, too, because she even knew how to use the guns and all in, in that one scene. Oh, yeah. And there, there's a lot of ultraviolence in the movie already in, in the film, so that's you, exactly what you expect to see. Uh, even though there's a lot of comedy elements in there, a lot of dialogue, um, this is perfect. I mean, this is the perfect way to watch uh, a Christmas movie to set the mood to. I heard they might do a sequel to this um, if this ever happens. Let's hope so. And and I probably learned that they might use uh, Charlie's Farron to play Mrs. Claus. If that's the case, I'd love to see that too, because now we're going to see... Two badass, uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus. And maybe they'll fight together, too, to stop some more mercenaries who are taking over. I'd love to see that. Because I love these two actors. And I also love the direction that was um, done so well by Tommy Wakola, because i got to say, he really does know his stuff, too. And you got to give credit to... Um, the producers, because uh, it's produced by 87 North Productions, the, the same people that gave us uh, the John Wick films. So uh, there, there's a bit of a nod of John Wick in there. And they, they just recently did Bullet Train. But with um, two talented writers, uh, Pat Casey and Josh Miller, they really know their stuff. And they really, they can throw in a lot of... Uh, crazy dialogue in this film and and very smart writing too and it just goes on pretty fast I mean with all the Christmas movies we've been getting over the years even those Lifetime, Hallmark or any of those uh, animated Christmas films but we also got adult Christmas movies too of any genre or like any horror and any um, Feel good types, even other family films, uh, even if, especially the ones that go for the brutal type, like Home Alone. Oh. It's always nice to have another badass uh, action Christmas movie, just like Die Hard. <laughs> but we get Santa to join in for the ride. Okay, <laughs> so that's Violent Nights, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later.